Hello my Jumpstart friends, it is Miss Sophia and today we are reading a brand new book called Dear Juno Together. I'm so excited for this book you guys, I think you'll really enjoy it. Now before we get started, we have to go over our expectations like we do every time we are together. We have to make sure that we are keeping our hands to ourselves using our inside voices if we are talking, making sure we're using our walking feet if we have to go anywhere, have to make sure that we make good choices and respect everyone that we are with right now. And most importantly, and Miss Sophia's favorite rule, is to make sure that we still have fun with Jumpstart. I know today is going to be a really fun time, but we just have to make sure that we are following all of our expectations to make sure it is the most fun it can possibly be. Now friends, you are going to meet with Miss Rebecca to talk about our book a little bit and then you're going to go ahead and read our book, Dear Juno, with our friend Miss Tony. So I hope you guys are just as excited as I am and I will see you guys later. Hi friends, today we will read about a boy who gets a photograph in a letter from his grandmother. Our vocabulary word is photograph. A picture made with a camera. Now, Miss Tony will be reading Dear Juno. Bye, friends. Hello, my Jumpstart friends. So today we are reading a brand new book, Dear Juno, for the very first time. Now, this book is written by Sonam Pak, and all that means all of the words are written by her, and then all of the pictures that we're going to see in her book are written by Susan, Kathleen, her tongue. Now, this boy right here is Juno. So the title is Dear Juno, and it makes me think that someone has written Juno a letter. It looks like he's taking something out of an envelope right here. I can tell it's open because I see the jagged edge right here. I wonder if the photograph from Juno's grandmother is inside, so the picture of Juno's grandmother is in there. Let's read and find out about it. Juno watched as the red and white blinking lights soared across the night sky like shooting stars and waited as they disappeared into faraway places. Juno wondered where they came from. He wondered where they were going. And he wondered if any of the planes came from a little town near Seoul where his grandmother lived, and where she ate persimmons every evening before bed. So here, Juno is sitting on a tree swing. He's looking up at the sky, and he sees a plane soaring by, going up high in the night sky. And he is seeing the plane, and it makes him think of his grandmother, who was living in Seoul, South Korea. That's a very faraway country from the United States. So Juno seems like he misses her a lot. So let's see if he gets to see her pretty soon. Just see right here. There we go. Juno looked at the letter that came that day. It was long and white and smudged. He saw the red and blue marks on the edge, and he knew the letter came from a faraway place. These red and blue lines right here. His name and address were neatly printed on the front, so he knew the letter was for him. But best of all, the special stamp on the corner told Juno that the letter was from his grandmother. So Juno was very happy to get a letter from his grandmother. He can't see her often because she lives so far away. So they have to send letters back and forth to each other to talk to one another. So look, he's so excited. Look at his happy face here. He's so excited to get a special letter from his grandmother. Through the window, Juno could see his parents. He saw bubbles growing up in the sink. He saw dirty dishes waiting to be washed. He knew he would have to wait for the cleaning to be done before his parents could read the letter to him. So his parents are doing the dishes. So Juno was so excited about the letter, but his parents were busy cleaning up so he couldn't read the letter right away. He had to learn to be patient and wait for his parents to be finished to get some help reading the letter. Maybe I can read the inside too, Juno said to his dog Sam. Sam wagged his tail. 
very carefully, do not open the envelope, which is the part that holds the letter. Inside, he found a letter folded into a neat, small square. So Juno peeked inside a little bit, and he saw um, the letter into a small square. He was so excited and really wanted to read the letter, so he couldn't wait, and he opened it. He unfolded it. Tucked inside were a picture and a dried flower. Juno looked at the letter in words he couldn't understand. He pulled out the photograph, which was the picture he saw. It was a picture of his grandmother holding a cat. He pulled out the red and yellow flower. It felt light and gentle like a dried leaf. Juno smiled. Come on, Sam. Let's go find Mom and Dad. So Juno found a, pho a photograph or picture inside his grandmother's letter. The letter doesn't look like it was written in English. I don't know if you could see, friends, but here, I don't think those are English words. Maybe Juno's grandmother wrote it in Korean, which is a different language than English. So I think that Juno really does need his parents' help to read the letter. But he could still look at the flower and look at the picture and see the new cat and the garden that his grandmother's working on. Grandma has a new cat, Juno said, as he handed the letter to his mother, and she's growing red and yellow flowers in her garden. How do you know she has a new cat, Juno's father asked. She wouldn't send me a picture of a strange cat, said Juno. I guess not, said Juno's father. How do you know the flower is from her garden, asked Juno's mother. She wouldn't send me a flower from someone else's garden, Juno said. No, she wouldn't, Juno's mother said. Then Juno's mother read him the letter. So Juno was very observant. He saw and thought about what Juno's grandmother sent him, and he came up to the conclusion, or the answer, that she got a new cat and she's growing new flowers in her garden. So the letter says, Dear Juno, how are you? I have a new cat to keep me company. I named him Juno after you. He can't help me weed, but the rabbits no longer eat my flowers in my garden. So here's Juno the cat right here, and here's the garden. So there she's growing her flowers, and oh, there's a rabbit running away. I think Juno is chasing them away. Just like you read it yourself, Juno's father asked. I did read it, Juno said. Yes, you did, said his mother. So let's keep reading and see what Juno will do next. Oh, now Juno's at school. So at school, Juno showed his class his grandmother's picture and dried flower. His teacher even pinned the letter on the board. Right there, you can see that. All day long, Juno kept peeking at the flower. He kept taking sneaky little glances at his flower underneath his desk. He didn't have a garden that grew flowers but he had a swinging tree. Juno looked at the letter pinned to the board. Did his grandmother like getting letters too? Yes, Juno thought. She likes getting letters just like I do. So Juno decided to write one. So he is going to write his grandmother his very own letter. So that's very exciting. Let's see what he does. After school, Juno ran into the backyard. He picked a leaf from the swinging tree, the biggest leaf he could find, so he's climbing the tree. Juno found his mother, who was sitting at her desk. He showed her the leaf. I'm going to write a letter, he told her. I'm sure it will be a very nice letter, she answered, and gave him a big yellow envelope. Yes, it will, Juno said, and then he began to draw. So, Juno was so happy that he wants to send his letter to his grandmother all the way in Seoul, South Korea. So first, he drew a picture of his mom and dad standing outside the house. Second, he drew a picture of Sam playing underneath the big swinging tray. Then, very carefully, Juno drew a picture of himself standing under an airplane in a starry nighttime sky. After he was finished, he placed everything in the envelope. So Juno looked so thoughtful, so careful in doing his drawings for his letter. So he can't write yet, so he can't write words yet, so he thought the best thing to do was to draw his grandmother a bunch of pictures, and he's thinking very carefully about what he wants to draw. 
Here's my letter, Juno announced proudly. You can read it if you want. Juno's father looked in the envelope. He pulled out the leaf. Only a big swinging tree could grow the leaf this big, he said. Juno's mother pulled out one of his drawings. What a fine picture, she said. It takes a good artist to say so much with a drawing. Juno's father patted Juno on the head. It's just like a real letter, he said. It is a real letter, Juno said. It certainly is, said his mother. Then they mailed the envelope and waited. So Juno is very proud. He has taken a lot of pride and he is very excited about what he did for his grandmother. He also got called an artist. Now an artist is someone who draws pictures as their job. And look at that beautiful picture right there. I'd say Juno is an artist. So Juno didn't write words. He drew colorful pictures and sent a leaf from a swinging tree. I wonder if his grandmother will understand what it means. There's all the pictures. There's Cat Juno, too, right there. One day, a big envelope came. It was from Juno's grandmother. This time, Juno didn't wait at all. He opened the envelope right away. Inside, Juno found a box of colored pencils. He knew she wanted another letter. Next, he pulled out a picture of his grandmother. He noticed she was sitting with a cat and two kittens. He thought for a moment and laughed. Now his grandmother would have to find a new name for her cat. In Korea, Juno was a boy's name, not a girl's. Then, he pulled out a small toy plane. Juno smiled. His grandmother was coming to visit. So, Juno's grandmother, instead of writing a letter, she sent a bunch of things Juno could understand the meaning of. So she sent boxes of crowns so she could write more letters. She sent another picture with now Ju Cat Juno has two babies. So now Cat Juno needs another name. And she sent a picture, not a picture, a toy plane. So now Juno knows that he is coming, she is coming to visit him. Okay, maybe she'll bring her cat when she comes to visit, said Juno to Sam. As he climbed into bed, maybe you two will be friends. So he's thinking maybe Cat Juno and Sam can be friends. Soon Juno was fast asleep, and when he dreamed that night, he dreamed about a faraway place, a village just outside of Seoul where his grandmother, whose gray hair sat on top of her head like a powdered donut, was sipping her morning tea. The cool air felt crisp against her cheek, crisp enough to crackle. He dreams like the golden leaves which cover the persimmon's garden. So he is so excited and so happy to finally be able to see his grandmother. And here we see the brisk morning. We see the cold morning. There's Cat Juno with her two kittens. She's drinking her tea in the morning. And that is it, Jumpstart friends. So that was our book, Dear Juno. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next week. Bye, Jumpstart friends.